Why divorce hurts women? Women. Yes, divorce hurts men. Yes, men go to court. Yes, men are taken for everything they're worth in court. And men are hurt. And so are the kids. But th let's look at this from a different angle. Why does divorce hurt women? Okay. The audacity of the modern woman is to assume and believe that she can have her cake and eat it too. And this is the result of listening to deceptive propaganda from feminism. Okay? Sometimes in life, you think you're winning and you're actually losing. Because you don't see the road. You don't see down, you don't see very far down the road that you're on. Sometimes we're on a road and we think it's the right road and it's actually the wrong road. And later on, it comes back to bite us and it hurts us. This is the case with divorce. This is the case with feminism, modern feminism, second wave feminism. Okay? Because it started to take down and attack or try to take down it could never take it down but it tried to take down and attack the so-called patriarchy which is just men in general in power okay men in general who are are, are in leadership roles in society and the irony and the sadness of this is that this is what men are supposed to be doing in a family you're supposed to be the leader in a family. You're supposed to be the leader when you're a father and you're a husband. That's your role. You're a leader. Okay? Now, modern society has... There's a lot of equalization going on. Which, to an extent, I myself personally am somewhat okay with. Okay? But, unfortunately, particularly in the, you know, traditional model, men are supposed to be leaders. And the irony, well, I don't want to say the irony, but the truth is, the truth of the matter is, is that women, female nature, responds positively to male leadership. Women want leaders, okay? And here's the here's the kicker. If if a man isn't a, a a strong leader in his core, in his essence, the woman starts to take the lead. For some reason, there's something in women, female nature, and this is why, you know, me personally, I I think my stars that I'm not married, or I think my stars that I'm not in a long term relationship, because I don't like that. I, I you know personally, but that's just me in my, you know, I, you know, uh, idealistic nature where I don't understand why women are like this, but it has to do with, you know, nature, it has to do with hypergamy, it has to do with weeding out. Now, I've talked bad about hypergamy, I get it, and, and I don't like it. To me, it's negative. But I also understand that hypergamy, in, in a sense, is necessary. In a sense, it's necessary because it ensures that the next generation is going to be strong and positive and, and it just is what it is for the time being until something changes. I don't want to get into my philosophy about, you know, society and the matrix and this, that, and the third. It, it is, it does tie in here. But at the end of the day, women want leaders in their core. So this is why a lot of times the lines in a relationship are blurred and really what end, what ends up happening is you'll have this kind of pseudo feminine leadership in the relationship where the guy's like, "Oh, happy wife, happy life," and he's really laying down to her and, you know, acquiescing to her whims and she's running the relationship subconsciously or subtly or however you want to look at it, latently whatever. It's not so you know, covert or, or excuse me, it's not so overt, you know, it's not so obvious, but she's running the relationship. And if you have discernment, you can tell, 
you can tell oh, there's a lot of modern relationships where the woman is secretly running the relationship through her strong personality, right? Some women are very meek. Some women are very passive and, and, and shy and subtle. And in these type of relationships, the man obviously is running the relationship because in a way he has to, right? Because men, this is how men are. If, if there's no leadership, if there's nothing going on, men, just any man in general, is going to jump in and he's going to start leading. He's going to start taking whatever social interaction or whatever endeavor or whatever is going on. He's going to push it forward because that's what men do, right? Women tend to be more passive in general, but you know, with modern feminism and modern society, women are, are taught to be more aggressive. They're taught to be more, oh, go get yours, girl. Be, uh, be a boss, right? Yeah, all the, and, and so they're taught to, and, and, and they rarely do it right. It's always, no, I say always, but many times they are taught to be leaders without actually understanding what leadership entails, without actually understanding accountability, discipline, responsibility, talent, skill, ability, all these things come into leadership. Leadership is a, you know, if you break down what leadership really is, it's about success. It's about competence, right? So a lot of times women are, are, are told they're supposed to be leaders, but they're not given any teaching on how to actually be competent and successful and skillful in any given endeavor. This is why you've got women in leadership roles because, you know, just because of <laughs> what's a, women's rights or what's the word I'm looking for, the, the um, affirmative action, right? You've got these shoe-ins for, you know, these, and, and, and it's like you have a responsibility in whatever role of, of title of job or, or, or um, endeavor you are taking on, you have a responsibility to succeed. You have a responsibility to that, you, you know, be competent. This is what leadership really is, right? So, so many times there's these relation, uh, there's these, whether it's a, you know, relationship or a social endeavor or, or, or whatever, where, where women are like, you'll see these women, you know, coming forward to, you know, lead quote unquote right and they they just don't do it right because they don't know what it takes and they're so used to getting things handed to them they think that, that things just materialize whereas men we go through years and years of failure and 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 some little success and and, and failure and failure and failure because we're actually held accountable we actually have to produce something we can't just exist and things happen for us that's not how life works for a man right so a lot of times what happens when in these modern relationships, these modern um, equality type things is, is a man is really just kind of cucked. He's really just kind of um, passive and acquiescing to his wife or his, his girlfriend or whatever. And she's subconsciously taking the lead. It's very, it's very hard to see a relationship that's really equal. It does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Um, and it can happen, and 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 when when it does happen, it's good and it's positive, and I do see it. I do see it. I can't say that I never see it. I do see it on occasion, um, and it's you know the role, the roles, and the lines of of who's doing what is kind of blurred, right? Which is fine, and um, but. Again, a lot of times what I see, because this is what subconscious, I don't know if subconsciously is the right word, subtly, modern feminism really teaches women to be um, supreme, su su supremus, right? To, to be supreme over a man. That's really what modern, particularly the radicalized, but really it's all kind of uh, mixed in with modern feminism, is women, it, it's really gender supremacy. That's what modern modern feminism really is. And um, this t causes women to want to have this leadership role, want to have control, want to, um, and you'll see it, but it's, it's, you know, sometimes it takes a while to come out. Sometimes you got to, you know, really know what to look for because um, women are feminine and, and feminine in its 
essence essentially is um, dependent, right? It's not necessarily independent. Men are dependent on themselves, which by default makes them independent because we have to. We have to have accountability. We, there's, there's, there's no one coming to save us, right? So we have to be dependent on ourselves, which is, which is you know, the definition of independent, right? But there's these buzzwords in, in modern society where independence is this cool thing. Oh, I'm independent, da, 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 da. When in reality, like, people need other people. We, 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 we need help. We need our friends. We need our, our support system. And, you know, this is where you get all kinds of lines crossed and lines blurred when it comes to women because they're constantly setting up these – because women are social and they're constantly setting up these social support systems and, oh, girl, you know, I got your back and woo, woo, woo and, 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 and you know, this, that and the third. So they're constantly supporting each other whereas men, for the most part, even though we do need – I do believe men, you know – there's, a, there's an old saying that my mom used to like to say, no man is an island, and I agree with that. And, you know, we need help from, from other people, and we need help from society, and we need help from humans and God and everything, man. We, we, we need all the help we can get. But for the most part, a man's got to pay his rent. A man's got to pay, you know, pay the car bill. A man's got to pay for gas. A man's got to pay for food. He's got to rely on himself and his own skill, his own competence, his own uh, success, a woman, a, a woman doesn't. She can lean on the, uh, you know, on the government. She can lean on her on, on her family. She can lean on a man, and just not work. And, and and a lot of times men are okay with this. And you know, the lines are blurred, you know, for women. Right. So, and the lines are particularly blurred in this scenario where they're taught to be independent. We're like, oh, oh, you know, you know, you need to be a leader. You need to be independent as a woman. I, I don't need no man. Woo, woo, woo. But yet, really, in their nature, feminine is is dependent. It's dependent on a man. The feminine nature is a nature of dependence, and you and you could also say the word submission. There, women are submissive to men. It's in their nature. They want to be. They 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 like to be submissive. It makes them feel good. That's that's because that's how God created them, or nature created them, whatever you know, what whatever and what have you, right? So. There's a lot going on when you have this modern propaganda and this modern feminism which tells women that hey you can be you can be in control, you can be a boss bitch, you can be a leader, woo woo woo, all this stuff that it tells these women, right? Yet their nature's saying something else. This is why so many women today are bipolar. This is why so many women have borderline personality disorder. This is why so many women um have aggression issues, they're toxic, etc., because they're getting this different feedback. Their nature says, oh, I want a man to depend on. I want a man to help me and take care of me. I want a man to, you know, submit to. This is what their nature says. Yet, their girlfriends, society, the, all the feminist books, their, 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 their radical feminist uh, university professors, all this information they have, this modern, radicalized feminine propaganda <clears throat> is is telling them oh no you need to depend on yourself you need to be a leader da, 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 da. and then this is why so many women are unhappy they've done studies women are unhappy being single workers single um career women they're they're massively unhappy you can google it it's their studies women are most happy being mothers at home stay-at-home mothers this is a fact this is a, this is a uh factual statistic all right women are happier at home it's just a fact it sounds misogynist like oh you know go, go back to the kitchen it's just a fact women are statistically factually happier at home raising children sorry <laughs> it's just the way it is right so this is why this modern divorce system is 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 really messing women up Yes, it's messing men up. Absolutely. Yes, it's messing families up. Absolutely. Yes, it's hurting children. Absolutely. But it's also messing women up and they don't realize it. They think they've got it made in the shade. For a little while, maybe, you might feel good in your 20s when, when you got your, uh, you know, you're feeling your oats and you're young. Sure. It's great. Oh, yeah, I got the world at my, at my toenails, right? My, my, my manicured toenails. I got the world, you know at my feet because all the guys are hitting on her all the guys are 
putting her on a pedestal. All the guys want to sleep with her. Guys are offering her this, offering her that. And she thinks she's literally a, a goddess. She thinks she's a celebrity. She thinks she's a queen. It's good for for, for 10 years in your 20s. You, you're, you're an attractive woman. Psh, you got carte blanche to do whatever. You are on top of the game. And it's true. But... Later on down the road, 30s, things start to change. Guys don't put her on the pedestal as much anymore. Uh-oh, what, what's this? Then she starts to manipulate. Well, I, I used to be able to get into everything everything I wanted handed to me at my, at my feet like a queen. Now it's a little bit harder. Now I got to manipulate them a little bit more. Now I got to use sex a little more to get what I want. Now I got to do this or do that. Sell myself here, sell myself there, in this way, in that way. Because you are you were a commodity, uh, you were a hot commodity, now you're a bargain commodity. See, you're, this is the, what, 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 you know, what women don't understand. And, and it's, it's obvious, but they don't teach women this, right? When, you, when, you're, when your worth as a human being is based around your sexuality, that's only going to last as long as you are sexually attractive. When you start to lose your looks at 30, when you start to get older at 35, when you are tapped out at 40, 45, guys are not coming after you anymore. It's all over. You've got a window of a decade or a decade and a half. Women. They, you know, maybe two decades if they take care of themselves. They've got a window. And that's a long window. It really is. That's a... That's like a king's reign or something, right? And, and it's great for, for them during that time. And this is why so many women out there just, they just do not have the, the aura of somebody who's mature or responsible or intelligent because they don't have to. All they got to do is show up and be attractive and they get everything, right? Because this is the stupidity of gynocentrism. This is the stupidity of modern men. This is the stupidity of... Um, you know, this, this society that we live in, which worships sex, sadly. Okay. So it, com it comes back around and it hurts women when it comes to m monogamy and when it comes to a quality relationship. First of all, quality relationship and marriage in particular is not an easy thing in and of itself with, without any other distractions, it's still not an easy thing. It's a hard thing to do, period, right? You, when you factor in the years of, of, of getting everything she wants, not compromising, not taking accountability, not understanding what real responsibility is, not understanding anything about real leadership, but yet being told she's a leader, being told that, oh, because you're a woman, you can do anything, and all this, all this um, unrealistic dream propaganda that America has and, and I'm not saying that is virtually 100% insidious or evil, not necessarily it's good to have dreams, it's good to uh, have goals and things like that per se, right but when, you, when it's delivered in such a way that distorts and twists the um, your self image where you think, oh, well, just because based on my gender, or and what a lot of times what it really is is it's it goes through this filter of well, I'm pretty, and and I, I bet it's subconscious, right? They'll tell you, oh, because I'm a woman, I can do whatever, whatever, but really it, it's it's subconsciously filtered through the I'm pretty line, right? They a, a lot of women don't even realize this enough to even be able to admit it that a lot of the reason why you get what you get in life is because you are physically attractive it's not because you're you're successful based on talent based on hard work based on discipline based on competence not necessarily a lot of times it's because of your looks and we start to see it you know on the mainstream you know, with, with affirmative action, with women getting jobs just because of their gender, particularly if they're pretty because, hey, you know, I got this hot intern. Yeah, I'll hire her over this boring, plain-looking intern, right? I mean, go look at Fox News and all the talking heads they got on there. And I'm not dissing Republicans or liberals per se in, you know, in any of this, but 
go go on Fox News and look at all the talking heads. They they hire hot women. Go on sports channels now. All these hot women are talking for some reason in sports, which is nonsense uh, and and needs to stop. But you know, um, their looks get them a pass in life, right? And they equate that to competence. They equate that to their own ability and a lot of times it's not a lot of times it's just because of affirmative actions because of your gender it's because you know at least at least you know ho- hopefully they hire these women on on bare bones you know bare bones competence like okay you can do the job fine right at least as long as you can do the job right i'm i'm, I'm not as mad but there's a lot of times when they really just don't have competence but anyway that's a different story so all this gives them a false sense of self-image, gives them a false sense of self-accomplishment. And then really what you have is, is you have these grown kids. You have these grown-up females who really have the mentality of a child because they don't really know what, what responsibility is. Couple that with female nature, which is submissive and sort of dependent on men anyways – Right. And, and, and don't take me wrong. I'm not that doesn't mean women can't do things. That doesn't mean women can't be competent in any career. That doesn't mean women can, they're, they're, they're just totally like walking children. You know, yeah, you can't give a children any kind of response. But no, women can do things. I'm, that's not that's not what I'm saying either. I'm not saying I'm not sitting here saying like they shouldn't be in the workforce. No, I'm not saying that. Right. But a lot of times. Uh, and, and that's not even to mention the, the just gender differences between men and women where, you know, where women, for, you know, for instance, women are, um, you know, emotionally based, whereas men are rationally based. Men think through problems. Women feel through problems a lot of times, unfortunately, right? This is a problem when it comes to. Um, output and when it comes to competence, when it comes to getting a job done, it's a problem when you mix in emotions. It's good when it, you're just rational, objective about things. Women are subjective. They they look they, they they feel first, and then how they feel dictates how they think. And it's hard for a woman to be objective um, and, and 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 using their rational brain first before they're subjective and emotional first this is why a lot of times women are not in stem fields right this is why a lot of times uh you know women don't have these types of jobs anyways not to get too far off on a tangent why is divorce hurting women okay with all that said all this turns out to a woman who's a lot oftentimes a career woman in her 30s not married still not only that you combine that with hypergamy which says i need a man who at least is on the same level as me or makes more than more makes more money than me or is better than me in this and this and this area well if you have these women who are in competition with men well first of all you wouldn't want to be married to somebody who's in competition with you you want to be married or in a partnership with somebody who's helping you to, to be with a partner or, or, or a spouse or a, um, to be married to somebody who is in competition with you is like, you know, okay, I'm, 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 I got competition at work, I got competition in life, and now I got to come home and compete with my wife. Like, that's terrible. No, I don't want to do that, right? So that's a problem, right? But at the end of the day, Men do not want to get married. Men are walking away from marriage. Why? Because marriage is is a risk. Marriage hurts men financially. Marriage hurts men's futures. I also believe, for not only from my experience, but from set you know ten you know a decade and several thousand of men's experiences that I've read and learned and talked to. Okay, men do not get over a relationship as easily as women do. It's harder for men to find a new partner, whereas it's easy for women to jump onto a new partner. And women, for some reason, are more 
emotionally adept at getting over somebody. Whereas men, it t sometimes takes us decades to get over somebody because we're not adept as adept in our emotions as women are. And, and men maybe need to work on that. But it doesn't mean that we need to be feminine. But it doesn't mean we need to have a <laughs> feminine emotions per se. But it's good to be in tune with your emotions so that you can work through things as opposed to just burying your emotions, as opposed to just never dealing with how you feel kind of thing. That's a negative. That can, that can boil up into anger or any kind of messed up situation for a man, right? Depression or, you know, high blood pressure or whatever because when you hold things down and you don't deal with them, right? So it's easier for a woman to move on. So it's bad on top of bad on top of bad on top of bad for a man to get married not only could it, will it hurt him financially potentially because men are the ones who, who bear the burden in, in the divorce men are the ones who pay alimony most of the time men are the ones who uh take that risk we risk being jailed if the woman lies about us right why would we want to get into a relationship that could cause us to be in jail it's 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 sad and it's you don't want that right so not only is it a financial risk it's a risk to our our person physically our person mentally emotionally because we don't get we don't get over it as quickly as women right it's just different men and women are different women are always looking for the next best thing women are always looking to jump ship and find something better or they're always self protecting i believe a woman puts herself above everything besides her kids and she puts her kids above her man that's what I believe, right? Whereas a man, he's self-sacrificial. We're sacrificial in our nature. We want to provide. We want to help and take care of. We're, you know, for the most part. I'm not saying there's no narcissistic, selfish men out there. There absolutely is. But in this sense, it pays to be that way. It helps men to be selfish because, yes, why would I put myself at risk for love? Love shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't have to risk my finances I shouldn't have to risk uh, my sanity. I shouldn't have to risk my, my personal health, my, my emotional and psychological health for love. Love should be an addition to your life, not a uh, risk, right? Love should be an asset. What's the other term? Anyway, you guys know what I'm saying. Not an asset, but a liability. Love shouldn't be a liability. But it is. It is. It, it's a liability. You get taken to court, it's over. So this is why it hurts women, because men are opting out. Men are jumping ship. It absolutely hurts women. Because at some point, they're like, yeah, I, 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 want, I want love. I want to find the love of my life. And a lot of times, it's too late. I mean, you got... You got a triple digit lay count, you got a triple digit partner, you know, 100 men you've been with and now, and now you're ready to settle down. You're ruined. You're not benefiting your man in any way. Only weak men will accept a woman with high mileage. Only beta men, only weak men will do that. Um, and sorry to say, sad to say in, in today's day and age, women are forcing men forcing men to be weak in that way because they're going out and they're just doing whatever on Tinder, and the club, whatever, whatever. They're forcing men to accept their past. We don't have any other choice because that's all there is out there is damaged goods, right? And a lot of times women are forcing men into this kind of cucked scenario where she really controls the relationship. She really takes the lead. Men don't like that. Many men, you know, not necessarily myself, as I said earlier, but many men don't want this equal partnership, quote unquote, when really she's controlling. What men really want is, hey, I want to take the lead. I'm the man. I want to be the provider. I want to take care of the necessities and, and I want you to take care of the kids. And the, the, many men are traditional in that way by nature. It's natural for them to want that. I'm not saying myself, <laughs> but many men are this way. That's And that's, I believe, the way probably God intended it and nature intended it because that's the way it's been. 
before before modern feminism. But this this lie that men were somehow oppressing and controlling the board by, by force. Oh yes, you have to be in the kitchen of my submissive wife. Woo, woo. No, that's the way it naturally naturally was before this radicalized second wave feminism came along. Before you know the the attack on the court, the so-called patriarchy before the women empowerment women leadership woo 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 hey be empowered whatever but be empowered within your natural realm within your natural role if you're doing if you're going against your nature and doing something that's unnatural how are you going to be happy there's a temporary happiness in you know the bible says there's a temporary happiness in sin there's a temporary pleasure in sin it's temporary it's not natural. It's not the way things should be. You know, like I said, you might have a decade. You might have two decades, if you're lucky, of being on top of the game because guys want to have sex with you. Again, that's all, that's all your, your talent. It's not because they're so... It's not because they respect you. This is what women get twisted, is they, is they twist validation into respect. They think that because men want to have sex with them, that somehow that's some some sort of self-actualization which equals success from respect or adoration or pet being pedestalized. No, it's just hormones. Guys just want to have sex with you. That's all. And and you're not any different than the other 500 Stacys that he saw in the last year that he lusted over. This is what women don't understand. They think they're special. They think that there's there's some kind of little snowflake when in reality the snowflake is 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 totally unless you put it under a microscope it's totally you know the same as all the other snowflakes <laughs> what that's coming down it's like you can't tell one snowflake from another to the naked eye you have to put it under a microscope and then it's oh it's unique then that is, that's my point is that these women don't realize that you're not any more unique than the other girl that's 10 feet behind you that's hot you're hot she's hot there's 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 no such thing as you know, this, this, oh, I'm, I'm one of a kind. I'm not like the other girls. Yeah, you are. You really are. And probably nine times out of ten, you're worse. You're worse than the other girl. Right? <laughs> so this is, this is the modern female, the audacious modern female. This is the audacity of the modern females to think, and it's really narcissism, and it's, um, you know, it's uh, it's just, it's just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's um, anyway, it's narcissism, and it's uh, it's just, it, 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 it's the ego. It's arrogance. That's the word I'm looking for. It's arrogance. It's arrogance. You think that you're something more than you really are. Yes, you're pretty. Yes, that means something. Yes, guys are guys get woozy around you. Guys are attracted to you. That means something. You know, beauty is a is a, a gasoline fire. You know, it's it's. I get it. Like you know, you 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 walk into a store and you see a gorgeous girl and you're just like, oh, like your your knees get weak as a man. Like like everybody treats her different and it's crazy. It's a crazy thing in in nature and society that some people are just gorgeous and it's weird and it's you know. And, but I I believe women are supposed to be more attractive for the most part because this is part of how they succeed as a you know that's part of how their gender is um you know that's part of what you know genetically replicates men are successful men are success objects women are sex objects Yes, there are sexy men out there, that's true, but most men are not that sexy. Most men are just competent. Because naturally, how things have evolved, we have had to provide. Men are providers. This is why women a lot of times will end up with guys who don't look like they're that great looking. But she is attracted to his ability to provide. She is attracted to his finances, to his success, to his consistency. A lot of times, unfortunately now, his, his docileness. He's amiable. He's docile. He's a good. He he'll, he'll be a good father. He'll raise my kids well. He's steady. He's not a cheater. 
right? A lot of times women will settle for these types of traits. This is what a lot of times they're looking for in a man. He's steady. He's, right? Why? Because... This has helped nature go forward. This has helped successful families, right? But now women are being told they can have their cake and eat it too. This is why you, you got this deviation called beta, called alpha fucks, beta bucks. She's physically attracted to the alpha guy who will never settle down with her, who will never help her raise kids, who will never be faithful to her because all the other Stacys want to have sex with him. All the other, you know, women at the club want to have sex. And, and, and what do you think he's going to do? He's going to spread his seed. He's going to go out and sleep with, you know, I'm not saying his goal is to necessarily have children, per se. But there's something within man that wants to bang all the women. I don't know. Right? And if he has access to that, women realize, oh, I can't, I can't replicate with this man. I can't. Be docile with this man. I can't have a long-term relationship with this man because he's out banging all the... But yet she's attracted to him and she wants to bang him too. And she will bang him too. And this is female nature. Right? So this is where you get alpha fucks, beta bucks. She wants that you know, alpha seed, beta need. She wants that alpha seed. And then she falls back on the beta to help her, her needs, to help her raise her children. That she had from the alpha. This is a sick deviation from what it should be, which is monogamy and, and one, one man, one woman, children, together. Love. And it does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm not saying that everything I'm saying is 100%. No, there is good marriages out there. There is real love. There is women who get married young and men who get married young in their early 20s and they have kids. and I've seen it. It happens. It's just not the norm anymore. It's not the norm, or, or you know, if it ever was, it's not the norm. It's rare. Anyways, uh, you know, this no-fault divorce in the 1960s or 70s, whenever that came out, and, and, and literally in a decade, the divorce rate went from, like, I think it was 39% to, like, 59%. It, it went up 20%. In a, in a decade, you can Google this, from 1960 to 1970, <clears throat> or even a, you know, a better example would be 1960 to 1980, two decades, it, it went from like 39% to like 59%. It went up 20 points at least, maybe more. Okay, why? No fault divorce. Doesn't matter if you cheated, doesn't matter if this or that, you can just up, oh, you know what, or, or you know, reconcilable differences. It's not working out, gone. <laughs> Women didn't need men anymore. It's true. Oh, I don't need a man anymore. Okay, well now you're now you're shooting yourself in the foot. Because as humans, quote unquote, need, we need, quote unquote, to be loved. We need, quote unquote, to not be lonely, right? And 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 j jumping from sex partner to sex partner is not fulfillment. It's not going to not make you lonely. A lot of times these women are more miserable in that scenario. But let's say you're not. Let's say, oh, you know what? It's cool. I, I jump from partner to partner. How long is that really going to last? What, if, what happens in your 40s and 50s? I see this all the time. These used up women, right, who had their fun it, from age 18 or whenever they started going out and having fun to age 45 now they hit 40 45 it's over it's over <laughs> and and these and a, you 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 see them they got no character they're broken down they often got, got, got you know, drug problems chronic cigarette smokers alcohol problem horrible personality horrible character mean you know, these, these, these ugh, nasty, like, 45-year-old radical feminist women, loud. It, it's, it's weird. I, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but um, this is what happens when you don't, when you just sow your wild oats. When you, when, you, when you throw care into the wind, you don't plan, right? Anyway, it hurts. It hurts women then. It hurts women when they're 40. It hurts women when they're... <laughs> when they hit the wall, it hurts them after, after the fact.
right? Sure, it's cool at first. Yeah, you're you're empowered. Uh, you know, when you're 19, for sure, you're 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 hot off the press, right? You're uh, you're a hot commodity when you're 19. 25, same same deal, hot commodity. Got the world at your, at your you, you you see the pictures. Oh yeah, we're out at the club. Yeah, we're eating. You know, we're eating at this restaurant. Woo, woo, woo. You know, we're, we're beautiful girls and all the guys want to bang us. And then what happens when they're 30, 35? Oh, there's no, there's no economically viable man that, you know, wants to marry me. <laughs> right? Okay, go do your career. Go, go make 100K a year. That's fine. You know, be a weather girl or whatever, whatever it is, you know. And, um. All of a sudden, there's no economically viable men. Well, what does that tell you? Hypergamy is real. Right? Go have a divorce. Right? Second marriages are even higher percentage of divorce probability. 75% of second marriages end in divorce. 50% of first marriages end in divorce. 75% of second marriages end in divorce. What do you got? It's not a good odds, man. Not good odds, right? So, this is why divorce hurts women. Divorce, I wouldn't say divorce hurts women the most. I think it hurts men and children more than it does women. But women out here acting like divorce is a, is a win for women, and I've heard this, I've heard women say this, you know, uh... Oh, now, now we don't, we don't have to rely on men anymore. And that's a good thing. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not a good thing because it's going against your nature. And a lot of times they just can't, they can't be satisfied. They can't be satisfied with when they don't need a man. For some reason, women like to need a man, right? Um... So, yeah, man, it's uh, a lot of women out here acting like divorce is a good thing when it's really hurting them in the long run. And again, what's it doing for men? It's turning us off. Hey, no way. No way. I'm not even going to get in a relationship. No way. Men are walking away. The, 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 the statistics back that up. Marriage is at the lowest it's ever been. Childbirth, I think, is at the lowest it's ever been. Of course, you got abortion and all these other avenues uh, to not have a child. You know, prophylactics and Plan B and uh, you know the pill, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? But uh, people aren't getting married and people aren't having kids as much as they used to, and women are feeling it. Women are out here sad. Oh, I'm lonely. I want love, I want a family, I want to marry, I want a husband. Da, da, da. Guys and guys are like, hell no, I'm not jumping into that. You're crazy. Until, it, until the laws change, until, uh, you know, legislation changes, it's probably in men's best interest to walk away from marriage. You know, because what's in it for us? risk, liability. Women are chasing men away and they don't even realize it. They think they're being empowered and what they're really doing is they're chasing men away. It, you know, there's that old saying, it, uh, you catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. It's very true, man. I mean, it's, I don't know if that's true in nature. I'm not even sure if bees like honey in nature. I, of course, I think they do. I don't, I don't freaking know. I'm not a, I'm not a biologist, a zoologist, whatever. Right, whatever. I'm not a anthropologist, or whatever the fuck. But it's kind of true. You, you know, when you're bitter and you're you you're, you you low key hate men. Yeah, you're pushing men away. And whenever a man says something about a woman, this is this is what women accuse men of: is, oh, the reason why you're single is because, you know, you're so bitter towards women. It's like that's projection. Flip it around on you with your feminism crap. Men don't like feminists. Because we're, men are not stupid. Women think men are stupid and, they, and they, we, we, we can all be programmed and controlled and, oh, just throw some sex their way and they'll do whatever you want. Maybe weak men. 
Smart men are like, hell no. I know what modern feminism is about. <laughs> it's man hatred. It's gender supremacy. Modern feminism is female superiority. At its core. Based on a bunch of lies. Oh, we're being oppressed by the patriarchy. Woo, woo, woo. No. Men are simply taking care of you. Men are simply competently... <laughs> competently... Uh, making a quality society for women and children. That's, that, that's all we've done. That's all the Industrial Revolution was. That's all... You know... All this... You know, taking us out of the Dark Ages. Taking us out of... You know... Uh, <clears throat> these these slave labor days at the at, you know at the turn of the twentieth century, right? Making work conditions quality and <laughs> all this stuff that men have done, and women just take it for granted and act like they aren't act like they deserve it. They earned it. <laughs> it's like, what did you do? I mean, like. You played a role. It's it's good that, that men had wives to come home to who were keeping house and taking care of the kids, but you didn't make those major decisions that, that made society amazing as it is today, as quality as it is today, you know, notwithstanding it's all its problems. Men did that, right? We don't want to get into a relationship with somebody who is competitive, who is anti-us, who is not submissive to male leadership. And again, I'm not saying that's for me personally. You know, I got my whole other thing going. But at the end of the day, I've been in relationships where women, you know, were competitive against me and I didn't like it. No way you're going to run the relationship. That doesn't feel right. Nope. Uh-uh. Doesn't feel right. And I've been in relationships with, with women who are very submissive and very... Uh, you know, supportive towards me, and I like that. That felt good. That felt right. You know, but I'm not saying men are higher than women necessarily. Each one has a different role. I believe in fundamental equality. I always have. I've always been a supporter of baseline, mo uh, not modern, but, but but baseline classic feminism. Yes, I think women deserve rights. I think they deserve the ability, uh, excuse me, not the ability, but the uh, the right to work. They, 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 they deserve the right to vote. It's just, what do you do with it? What do you do with that freedom? I shouldn't even use the word freedom because that implies at one point they weren't free. I, I don't know if women were never not free. By necessity, based on environment and circumstance, they had to rely on men. But, <laughs> you know, I'm sure she had a choice in, in most cases. Maybe times were hard back in the cowboy days. I don't know, man, but if you look at history, it's not like it's always been like this. It's not like we've always had these rights and these freedoms and these wonderful legislation and laws that made society so great and safe. It's not like it's always been like that, man. Go back 500 years and you got... <laughs> you know, the medieval days. I mean, come on, man. It's, you know, it's obvious. That was not a fun time for anyone, men or women. It's not a safe time for anyone, men or women. Men did that. Men brought us out of the medieval times. Men brought us out of, you know, the age of ignorance and into the age of enlightenment. Study history. Women didn't do that. Men did it. Anyway. You get my point. It's a sad thing. Uh, divorce, it's a sad thing. We see things like Will Smith and Johnny Depp and all these celebrities getting taken to, taken to the cleaners and lied about and manipulated. And <clears throat> that's just a, that's a macrocosm of what's going on in the real world. <clears throat> Men are getting screwed and we don't want to we don't want it <laughs> we don't we don't want to we don't want to commit we don't want to jump into the fire we don't want to jump into the deep end and women are like hey what's going on why why is this right 
So anyway, I'm going to end it there. I appreciate you guys listening. It's been Jay Lee, Northwest Podcast. Peace.